Hey, batter, batter. Hey, batter, batter. Swing, batter, batter. Smalls, you're killing me. A different take today on the Crosby Conundrum. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, well, it may have finally happened. We'll have to see what the Swami Steve Crosby thinks on, uh, well, this is episode two of the Crosby Conundrum. And uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, on Friday uh, of every week, uh, Stephen will give me a theme and I'm supposed to put together a shave uh, for that theme. And this one, I think he may have stumped me on, but we'll see, because this is gonna be a little bit of a different take on baseball. That was the theme. Um, now, a lot of my baseball stuff, I don't know where it's at. I did play baseball in uh, high school and college, but uh, I, I, I'm still a huge baseball fan. To me, it's the American pastime. There's no greater sport, but I don't have a lot of stuff anymore. Um, so we're going to try to put this together. So let's talk about baseball. What does baseball smell like? Well, if you've been at the ballpark, whether that be for a spring training game or whether that be for um, a pro game, when they're taking the street out and they're and they're going around the bases and making that dirt, it, it kicks up some dust. Well, I looked at what I had and I said, okay, this will work. A uh, fine orange noir. Well, this is better known as orange dirt, and it has a very earthy type of uh, scent to it. And if you mix that and you kind of imagine a little bit the dirt mixed with the grass, this kind of does it. So there's the baseball diamond per se and a little bit of the grass. Well, what's another important part about baseball? The baseball bat. Well, this is about the closest I can come. And this looks like a baseball bat. And this is an older razor. Uh, this is probably a razor that uh, Babe Ruth would have shaved with. So we're going to go with that as our baseball bat theme for that. Um, and what is baseball without beer? Well, there you go, beer. Uh, and then uh, as far as the aftershave is concerned, we'll get to that in just a little bit. From... Yeah, so he gave this to me on Friday and I've been thinking about it. And frankly, I don't know if this is going to fit. Um, I'm trying to take a different take on baseball, more of the old classic baseball. You know, when the guys that played baseball were athletes, yes, but really they were drinkers and smokers and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens here. We'll see if the Swami uh, will give me a pass on this one. But I think it, it you know, I did, I didn't get as matchy-matchy as I wanted to, but, uh, you know, the beer brush, because you have a beer. Now, granted, I wish this was in a red Solo cup, because that would be even better, or one of those clear... Uh, sixteen dollar, uh, sixteen ounce beers that you get at the ballpark. So we'll see if this does well. Um, the 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 razor has been stropped uh, twenty five and fifty, and it is it is a near wedge, but as a rattler grind. Uh, very interesting razor, very quiet. Uh, this razor was actually acquired. From a estate sale, one of my clients back when I was in the insurance business had acquired it at an estate sale in Tombstone, Arizona. And the razor itself does date back to the late 1800s, which means. And I do have a little piece of paper that shows that it was used in the Tombstone Barbershop. So who knows who this razor has shaved over the years. It's very interesting because you don't see too many near wedges uh, at the 4 8 uh, size. So that's kind of cool too.
But the reason I chose it for today is because, as I said, the scales kind of look like a baseball bat. And speaking of the boys of summer, I don't know if anybody watched. The New York Mets play the Phillies yesterday. But what started is what everybody thought might be a Mets route changed in a big hurry. Yeah, so um, this does have a kind of this, the, the smells that you would get at a baseball diamond if you're sitting, you know, behind home plate and stuff like that. So it does give a little bit of a baseball field to it. Or if you played Sandlot and you were playing on a dirt lot that had no grass and of course the rains came by and it was muddy but you were still playing baseball i can see where that would possibly work like i said it's pretty thin and i apologize to mr crosby that it's not more obvious but i think it it it, 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 it gives a take of uh a different type of baseball feel. And speaking of that, if you like what you see here, please come and join us at www.theshavingcadre.com. We do feel we are the finest gentlemanly forum on the interwebs. Uh, looking forward to a Zoom call today. And also, if you remember, TSC Con 2025, we're trying to get a cruise going into the Caribbean, so come and join us. And also, Drinks and Daves, Tuesday night, 6 p.m. This week's theme is everything we love, everything we like, we're going to compliment everything. So come join us for that 6 p.m. Pacific uh, at Drinks and Days. This is a really fun razor to use. It's just what's weird is, you know, obviously with uh, full hollows, quarter hollows, uh, full bellied hollows, you really get that sound feedback. You don't get that with this. This one's very quiet overall. So it's a little bit different, but fun. This razor may need a little bit of a touch up. It's not terrible, but I can feel that it's got a little bit draggy, but not terrible. Probably just a little quick shot across the Arkansas and I'll probably be fine. Now this one I have not taken across the convex strop yet, so I'll probably do that too. Because in my opinion, you know, going back into talking about honing styles. And stuff like that. My, my normal way of honing is straight uh, Cotacule Arkansas. However, I have adopted a few that are um, convex honed. And uh, I love them. Um, if I had to replace all my honing, I'd probably do that. So, you know, those people that are, are uh, against convex honing, all I would suggest is to say that, you know, hone and shave the way you want, but do your research and don't disparage anybody for the fact that they like convex honed uh, razors. Because I can tell you from experience, both shaving myself and shaving barber clients that they're superior 
Now you can argue with me all you want, but uh, the bottom line is I shave people for a living. So unless you can come to the table with something that trumps that, then uh, just let people shave the way they want and compliment them for that. Don't disparage them for it. Because it's your shave. And I find that for me, I've got three primary um, ways that I, that I have razors that are honed. They're not all the same. I've got some that are Dillicott. I've got some that are convex or concave, however you want to put it. I call it super curve, thanks to Bill. But I... Uh, I also have a bunch that are Shapton stone honed. And although I like all of them, you know, I find that lately that the convex works for me. And I guess I should qualify that. that I have two razors that were honed by Bill, and then the razors that I have, that I have started using a convex bench strop. So they're not necessarily honed uh, concave, but the strop does change the degree and the angle. So it does give it a little bit of a different shave. And I love it. Just a little bit of cleanup today. Also, this is a really fun razor to flat blade with. It's very easy to rotate through the axis with this. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, very nice DSBBS shave. As smooth as a baseball. Okay, that was lame. Ready for another pun? And no foul on the alum. So I guess you could argue when I was talking about beer for the uh, baseball, this is Chisel and Hound. So let's say that you're in a skybox. You know, you'd have a coaster with your beer served like this. So that works. Works really well, as a matter of fact.
Today we'll be using cucumber and mint for our witch hazel because it, uh, it's summery and spring-like, I guess. For the boys of summer, as they say. And we'll do a little bit more. Okay, so now we're going to kind of go retro for the aftershave because, you know, I needed to bring some green into it uh, to kind of match the, uh, you know, kind of match the uh, the theme of, of baseball. And what better way than to use something vintage? Now, I will be honest, the, the, vin the bottle is vintage, the juice is not. But you can think of what these guys would use after they ba showered and shaved in the baseball and they're getting ready to go out. Yeah, you bet. Aqua Velva Sport in an old Aqua Velva bottle. And it's bright enough to where it, yeah, it feels like baseball. I know I'm grabbing for things right now. I realize it's pretty thin, but hey, you use what you got. But a nice, nice little menthol hit. And it's got that green, um, not, you know, not the ice blue aqua velva, but the Aqua Velva Sport has that, that athleticism to it, I guess. Okay, so for the talc today, now, just pretend that this is a rosin bag. Let's, let's talk about that. So, so the guys are putting rosin on, and rosin's going everywhere. So look, there's rosin. So we'll call this rosin. Okay, I may have overdone that just a bit, but... You get the idea. And perfect for summer. So we'll just assume that that's rosin. Okay, here's where we kind of go a little off the rails. So in talking to Stephen today, also, uh, one of the best things about baseball is the smell of a baseball glove, especially if it's been on your hand for a couple of hours and it's sweaty and it's hot. That smell of worn in uh, baseball glove leather is amazing. So I started to think about that and I started to think, well, besides that, what other leather smells like that? Well, a leather chair in a cigar lounge has that same almost like a horse hide, almost like a, a saddle. You know, the saddle leather, the baseball glove leather, the cigar gouge leather is all about the same. And if you think about some of the older style baseball players, what did they do? They hung out in clubs and they drank and they drank bourbon and they drank scotch and they drank beer and they sat in these lounge chairs. And, you know, so we'll go with there. So what we decided to go with for our uh, fragrance today is Replica Jazz Club. Uh, meant to be a uh, the the kind of the feeling of being inside of a jazz club with the leather chairs and everything else and the and the booze and I think that this really fits because it's got that smell of tobacco it's got that smell of leather and everything else and in the old days these guys weren't athletes they were guys that were good at baseball that drank and smoked and everything else so anyhow that's my story and I'm sticking to it so thank you for joining us for episode two of the um, Crosby Conundrum, baseball. I hope I did it justice. And if not, I did it in a, in a kind of a warped way. So we'll see you again soon. And next week, who knows what the Crosby Conundrum will bring us. I'm Barbara Dave. This has been Barbara Dave Shaves and Such. I hope everybody has a wonderful, blessed Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.